jump ahead here we still haven't talked about lfo mod but i want to jump ahead here because this is a really cool thing while we're talking about pulse with modulation let's be aware of something so often pulse with modulation was added to synthesizers in the 70s as an apology for having only a single oscillator so you would have a single oscillator they would put pulse with modulation on there and then uh, in someone's mind, apparently, this sounded like the sound of two oscillators beating against each other. Therefore, it didn't really matter that you only had one oscillator, right? Uh, so that was kind of, you know, pulse width modulation was presented often in the 70s on monosense as an apology. But what Yamaha has done here in 1979 is that they have given you pulse width modulation on two oscillators. This is a two oscillator synth and each one has pulse width modulation. That is an uncommon thing. Go look it up. It's not It's not a thing that frequently happens, but it really is the point at which where you're saying, okay, you know, pulse width modulation is cool on its own. It doesn't have to be an apology for a single oscillator. So let's bring in oscillator two and talk about pulse width modulation on two oscillators simultaneously. Okay, I have, uh, pull, I have oscillator two set to a square wave. And of course we can mess with the pulse with. And just having two square waves happening where one is pulse width modulated and one is not and different square widths creates an interesting effect as one's pulse width modulating uh, grates against one's pulse width that is not. That is a great sound. So already, try that with your SH-101, okay? I'm sorry, if I, I'm just gonna keep beating on the SH-101. Uh, but just primarily as an example of how much more powerful this synthesizer is than that one, even though there is a very substantial price discrepancy on them on the used market. Anyway, let's listen. <laughs> But you can do that on some synthesizers, some synthesizers out there. Uh, yeah, anyway. That is a cool sound. But let's bring in pulse width modulation. Excuse the static, these knobs are old. That is a really cool thing. We now have pulse width modulation on two different oscillators simultaneously. Now we can set the pulse widths to the same amount and the modulation the same amount, which is like a doubled pulse width modulation. It's a pretty cool sound. But then just adjusting one oscillator's pulse width and not the other will give you some really cool effects. We're gonna take the pulse width of VC VCO2 and turn it up. So what we have is those two pulse width modulating differently and it cr creates a varied sound that is really desirable. And of course we can adjust amount too. By adjusting amount and wave at the same time, we'll get different sounds. But that's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why the CS15 to me is such a cool synthesizer is that we have two oscillators and we can have independent pulse width modulation on them. Now, I wish that uh, we could modulate the pulse width on one oscillator from a different source or at a different speed, and that'd be cool. But come on, we don't have to be greedy. It's still a great sound. <laughs> And listen what happens when we put the LFO up into the audio range. Now 
get a nice distortion on both oscillators. So if we bring those down, or let's bring one of them down. You could do something like have uh, a lot of oscillation, a lot of that effect on the pulse width on one oscillator and not on the other, and then drop the other oscillator back in the mix. cool tone in the background. Or you could bring it down, bring the modulation down on both of them, uh, which just gives a nice raspiness to the tone. That's a really cool effect to be able to mess with, and it's not very common. You usually don't have that opportunity, so that's cool. Okay, so while we're talking about two oscillators at once, let's also touch on the fact that we have some detuning we can do with oscillator two. Now, it only goes up and down a sixth. Well. Not down a six. You know what I'm saying. Goes up a six. Let's listen. And it's kind of a shaky six. I wouldn't probably use that because I can't really tell if it's exactly a sixth. But there's a fifth, which you, you'll use a lot, especially if you're a prog rocker. Okay, let's hear it. So you get the benefit of having two oscillators and having them at different pitches. do the thing that I always tell you to do. Uh, you can also create a single oscillator timbral variation by setting different pitches uh, and different octaves and then dropping one way back in the mix so that its frequencies stop being audible frequencies and start being harmonics. <laughs> You can create waveforms that don't exist on your synthesizer by doing that. And especially if you do sort of non-harmonic tuning. Anyway, that's a lot of fun. But yes, you can uh, manipulate the pitch of oscillator two uh, to get anywhere from different frequencies to just some simple detuning. said weedy. Okay. So that is very basically your oscillators and your oscillator section. We'll talk about glide in a while, which adjusts the oscillators, but we will talk about that in a separate video. Okay. So we're off to a great start demonstrating just how great the Yamaha CS15 is. <laughs>